Hello and welcome back to another episode of Nick Tiffany's Movie Reviews, coming at you online and in print format at nicktiffany.com, in audio format wherever you get your podcasts, and even in video on YouTube. Today we are talking The Holdovers, which is the latest film from Alexander Payne. It's been some years since we uh, since we last heard from Mr. Payne. I feel like one of the last films I remember reviewing uh, before my hiatus was Downsizing. Which at first I was kind of really looking forward to. Seemed like a fun sci-fi-ish concept. You know, we shrink you down. We shrink all your assets. Your money goes further because you're living in a little small world. And if the end of the world happens, then great. You know, you're already prepared. And we can put you away in like a little volcano or like in the side of a mountain somewhere. And you'll be safe. And you're living real life, you know. And it was charming enough of a premise. You got Matt Damon and Hong Chow in the film. And it just fell flat for me it just was a it just was turned into a cheesy premise it was not funny or nearly as funny as they thought it was um and it was just a weird big miss for Payne, who was coming off of nebraska with bruce dern uh written by bob nelson which is just a well forte in that film too fantastic study of some of this middle america life these generations of families and what you know, it's a different, different look at different people who I would say we don't always get to see represented in film. And before that, we'd seen The Descendants with George Clooney, Shailene Woodley, a film studying grief, how we handle it, obviously, how families might handle it. This look at just I mean, this entire family dynamic there in The Descendants was uh, truly unique whether it was frustration from not understanding, feeling like, oh, maybe dad wasn't there. I think we think a lot of things about our families and maybe we don't totally know the entire truth of our mothers, fathers, grandparents, whomever. Um, and so something that Payne has done so well since about Schmidt and even sideways is just studying the human condition and studying people and putting their hearts out on the line and putting these I don't want to say unique people, but those who don't always get the spotlight under a microscope and showing us different ways of life, different stories, different things that for most, I'm sure, seem ridiculous or crazy. But no, actually, a lot of people live like this or most people deal with things just like this. And so the holdovers, I'm happy to say, is such a return to form for what Payne is used to doing, the stories he's used to telling Paul Giamatti, a favorite actor of his, is familiar here, still just as exceptional as he always is. He's playing the curmudgeon Professor Paul Hunnam. Maybe that was also a little on the nose, but Professor Paul Hunnam, he teaches at this all-boys academy in New England. The year is around 1970. Um, you get the impression that this is a wealthy boys school, so a lot of rich parents sending their kids here some so that they can just have them out of the way so that they don't have to be around and they can live their life and do whatever some so that their children can get into ivy league schools and professor hunnam's relationship with the staff and students is not the best you could say that most people probably hate him tougher grader tougher on the students not cutting anybody any slack but part of that is is because he feels like he owes it to what the school was founded on to not let these rich kids pass by, you know, Oh, I'm so nice that your dad donates millions of dollars to the school. That doesn't mean I'm going to give you the B that you need to go graduate and go to Harvard. And so you could pay more money there or whatever, you know, he's like, no, I want students to actually work for what all this money is going towards paying for them because there were people who would kill to be in a position like this so that they could earn a better education and get a better college education from there. Um, and sort of in the background of all of this, you've got this looming feeling of military academy going off to military school, going and getting drafted, not drafted, but going, enlisting, coming back after. And that's not really a common thing for any of the kids there at Barton. Um, you know, that's just most of their parents are able to pay their way through. There's really no way that they wouldn't get to a school and then be able to pay for that as well. 
But that's where you've got Mary who comes into the story. And Mary played just brilliantly by Devine Joy Randolph. She's the mother of Curtis Lamb, who was one of the few black students who attended Barton and the only one who really went and served overseas and unfortunately lost his life. And so the story of Curtis is kind of, I don't want to say looming in the background, but Mary still works there at the school in the cafeteria. Um, you know, this is a recent thing for her as well. And so I'm sure in some ways it's nice to be around where he was and where she got to see him so often. And really where the story kind of takes place is it's right before Christmas break. Unfortunately, Professor Hunnam gets stuck with the holdover job, which means he's going to have to stay there for two weeks on campus to essentially babysit any of the students who can't make it home for Christmas break. Whether it's because they just their families are too far away that they can't make the trip, or maybe we didn't want you to come home, and so you're just going to tough it out there. And that's where we meet Angus Tully, played by Dominic Sessa. Angus is probably one of the smarter guys there, though he doesn't always want you to know it. Doesn't always want to put in the effort, but sometimes thinks that his ish don't stink and... He's like, all right, I'm going to be getting out of here. I'm going to Boston. I'm going to do some fun stuff for a winter break until you get the call that, oh, unfortunately, you might have to stay there, honey. We're so sorry. And so Angus ends up with his favorite professor, Mr. Hunnam. And what starts as what you think might be a bitter battle of two people who just couldn't be less psyched to be with one another turns into a really sweet and understated look at compassion and understanding and just realizing that so many of the feelings and emotions we have as humans are not unique and individual to ourselves, but are often shared by people who maybe we think have it all together. Maybe we think, Oh, everything's probably great in their life because they seem so happy and so sharp or whatever. But the reality is most people feel and face a lot of the same challenges whether it's mental, physical, or otherwise. Um, but breaking down those barriers and finding that point of understanding is often not easy for people. I would say sometimes men especially, uh, when it comes to talking about your feelings or when it comes to actually discussing what's weighing on your soul. And so what this movie kind of turned into, at first I thought it might be a you know breakfast club style deal for these prep academy boys, but I was just really pleasantly surprised to find that it was so much more and that it was saying so much, I think, just in general about privilege, but talking, too, about how hard some people work for the same opportunities that are just discarded by some or, oh, because I can get sent to another school or they, my parents can enroll me in another school for however many thousand Whatever I did here, it's not going to matter. I'm still going to get into a great school. I'm still going to go to college. I'm still going to get a great job working for my dad's place, my fraternities, wherever. Um, and it's great to be connected and to have wealth and whatnot, I'm sure. But the reality is most people don't have that opportunity. Most people aren't that fortunate. Um, and so shining a light on how hard some people work in the realities of their situations compared to some of these other kids was really interesting to watch. And granted, there's also this third side of things where, yes, I have something that we see often with anyone in the entertainment business, it seems tons of people with millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, billionaires, more money than God could ever make or throw at them. And some of these people are some of the most depressed saddest individuals who are out there you know obviously money cannot buy happiness and some people have yes you could buy things that'll make you happy in the uh the temporary and maybe pseudo long run but humans are not meant to live without connection and understanding and a feeling of belonging and i think they did a really really great job kind of also touching on some of that in a, in a way that doesn't also like, all right, well, you know, and like they've said about Batman, it's easier for Bruce Wayne to cry as an orphan because he's got billions of dollars, obviously, you know, sure. 
he's going to be the wellest off orphan ever, but you would never wish on anyone that they had to grow up without, you know, there's just certain things, the attitudes sometimes of like, ah, well, you know what? You're rich. So whatever. It's easy to say that, but it also underscores a lot of maybe bad, maybe those person's feelings or experiences growing up, or maybe you might think it'd be great to grow up in the rich house with, a billion rooms and whatever but you're like oh yeah i was raised by nannies and i really don't know my parents well or i didn't get to know them because they were always vacationing somewhere and again there's certain things that it's like yeah maybe it's a better problem to have than some other people but i think the way this film touches on a lot of different unique experiences and how it kind of has them blend together is just really really great um the script that was written by uh david hemmingson really solid really great characters great discussions um i think pain you know he's another one of those who more often than not he's just the director finds a great story and a great screenplay works with them to create that um and so i think it's helpful when he's also working with great material there uh, because top to bottom this was just such a delight and such a surprising experience to have you know i went to the earliest screening in the morning i you know i knew it was alexander payne i was hoping to be kind of funnily enough funny um you know paul giamatti is just hurling educational insults at these kids and it's just going way over their heads and so um as a fan of english in the english language there's tons of commentary he makes or just words that he hurls at kids where you're just like if they knew what you were saying, they'd probably more like be more offended. But of course, they're not studying, so they don't they don't get it. But then he's also just going to spout off in Latin just to flex a little bit on you. So I'm terrifically, terrifically impressed with this movie. I'm just saying things now. We're just making words and phrases up. Alexander Payne, hats off. Paul Giamatti, especially, so terrific. Uh, Dominic Sessa was really surprising as angus in this film really won me over especially by the end um definitely we'll be looking to see what he does next as always if you want to stay tuned for new movie news and movie reviews keep looking at nt movie reviews on all social media networks podcast platforms and on youtube thanks again for checking us out we got lots more to come this month and the following month so be sure that you stay tuned thanks again you guys